Good morning, good afternoon, hello. How everybody's doing? Give y'all a few minutes before going in, get my day started. <clears throat> so anyway let me just go ahead and say um didn't watch the oscars actually i was watching uh my wife and i was watching hillsong uh hillsong exposed we were watching that uh, a few people had hit me up and was asking me, hey, man, did you see Hillsong Exposed? Have you seen the new Hillsong? Not the new Hillsong, but did you see the Hillsong documentary uh, that's out? Man, you need to take a look at it. You need to take a look at it. Um, there's some things that you may want to, you know, talk about and discuss. There's a lot of similarities in what you are, um, what you're dealing with and what you've been discussing that's uh, that's in this uh, in this film. And I said, okay, okay. So I uh, ended up... Um, started watching that i don't really care for the oscars uh, i mean it's just i mean it's just not anything that i find myself interested uh, in um these days don't really know what's going on um who's doing what or anything just just been totally disinterested uh in it but um i did <laughs> i did uh hear about the slap i did hear about that and um Actually, I'll tell you the first person who told me about it, my brother, Carol Bob. He said, <laughs> he inboxed me, and uh, shout out to my boy, Carol Bob, man, uh, from Houston. So he inboxed me, he said, hey, man, did you, uh, are you watching the Oscars right now? Or whatever, the Oscars are, yeah, I think the Oscars are Academy, or whatever, whichever one it is. Um, and so uh, he said, uh, he said, man, Eddie, are you watching it? I said, no, no, I'm watching, I'm watching this documentary, man, on Hillsong. He said, oh, he said, OK. And I, and I, I forgot all that he said. He said, uh, did, did you know, what did what did Will do to uh, to Chris Rock? I'm like, what are you talking about? And so curiosity, of course, started to peak. And um, I went ahead and, and started going on on YouTube. I said, let me, let me just type in because anything, you know, you, you, can, you can just pull it up. And uh, I just typed in Will Smith. And Chris Rock, and then first thing I see, Will Smith smacks or Will Smith punches Chris Rock live on the uh, on the Oscars. I'm like, what? Nah, this, this got to be a joke. This got to be a joke. And the next thing I know, I'm just seeing a whole bunch of of, of uh, headlines breaking. You know, Will Smith uh, slaps Chris Rock. Will Smith, whatever. What I'm not. I'm like, yo, what? Are you serious? And so I actually saw it. And so, of course, uh, I saw the edited version where without the expletives, and then I saw the UK version <laughs> with the expletives, and um, and so yeah, yeah, that that happened. Now, whether you want to say it was um, staged, whatever, I'm 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 not, I don't know, don't even care, really, to be honest. Uh, I, here's what I do know, and here's what I will say. Um, whether staged or not, it sent the message. Here's the message that it sent. Uh, number one, it sends a message of hypocrisy. What do you mean by that? Well, it sends a message of hypocrisy to the black community. Hey, I'm, I'm going to go there. Yeah, I'm going to go there. It sends a message of hypocrisy to the black community because all of this, you know, black lives matter. All of this, you know, uh, my people, our people, all that, all that. We we got to come together, and, and you know all all this stuff that you've been we've been hearing for the past, you know, two years. Unity, togetherness, empowerment, all of that, all of that. It was hypocritical. It was hypocritical. Chris Rock is a comedian. Chris Rock is a comedian. Will Smith knows that Chris Rock is a comedian. Um, Jada, she joked about her own uh, apoplexia. I think that's what it's called. How you pronounce it? 
of her hair, losing her hair. She did a video on it, joking about it. Um, so this is just me personally. What would I have done? What would I have done if my wife did a video joking about her losing her hair? And then I'm on a stage as a comedian and, and I'm, I'm working my way around the room joking about it or whatever like that. And I don't know the relationship or status of friendship between Chris Rock and, and Will Smith prior to this whole situation that, that popped off before the entire uh, alopecia. Thank you, John. Alopecia. Um, oh, al alopecia. A lot of people. Okay. Um, if if their friendship or relationship was uh, cool prior to this, don't know what it is now, you know. But nonetheless, um, she joked about it on 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 her timeline. She joked about it in her videos or whatever. Um, and not only the not only that, but Will Smith was laughing. I mean, he didn't he didn't just smirk. Will was Will was actually laughing, like head back laughing. Jada wasn't. Now, okay. She wasn't. She may have found that to be offensive. I understand that. But the hypocrisy on Will Smith's part is number one, bro. You, you really, your wife is controlling you. Your your wife has been controlling you since we don't know how long. Um, your wife has disrespected you prior to this award ceremony, bro. Your wife disrespected you <laughs> since uh, August Alcina. And I'm not one for violence or condoning violence. I'm, I am one for protecting my family, protecting my wife. You know, making sure my wife is respected and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but, bruh, the disrespect, I don't believe, was on Chris Rock. I don't. The disrespect actually was on you. It was actually on you. That's just, this is just my opinion. It's just, just my opinion. Your wife has publicly shamed you so much uh that i mean your manhood has already been taken your manhood is your your man was your manhood was taken at the red table at the red table conversation she took it and she still has it so basically she wants you to respect her when it's convenient but she doesn't care about respecting you at all and and for me that's a problem that 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 is a huge problem. Um, but it's also hypocritical. Um, I would say it's also hypocritical for us as a society, and I'm gonna go somewhere with this as well too. Because it seems to be okay, or it was okay at a time when comedians could could laugh and joke about anybody no nobody was safe nobody was safe i remember i remember in living color when when damon wayans would play handyman and all that and, and would do jokes about you know the handicap and all I'm, I'm just saying it, it was i mean people did jokes about blind people people did jokes about people who started people did jokes i mean about i mean about any and everybody nobody was safe no one but now we can't we can't find humor just in just in life circumstances and i'm not talking about you know dragging people and all that kind of stuff this this was this was a comedian's you know uh guess you can say monologue or whatever the case might be when you have people being roasted i mean it just this is just my this is just my opinion okay yeah, and we all laughed at the truth of each of those situations. Exactly, Amy. Exactly. And so I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, saying that there's not a time and place to laugh or not. Uh, you know what I'm saying? 
I'm, this this was a time I believe where you know this could have been taken in jest. I mean, Will didn't have a problem with it. Will only had a problem when Jada had a problem with it. But Jada, you didn't have a problem with it when you were joking about it. Or well, it's different. I can joke about myself. Well, wait a minute, what? What? If you don't want anybody to talk about your hair or the lack thereof, then don't post it. Don't laugh about it. Because if you're laughing about it, then it should be fair game for others to say, you know, hey, hey, you know, can't wait to see you on, on, on G.I. Jane too. Whatever the case might be. And again, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't know the status of the relationship. I don't know that. But I know, I know this. It was it was not a good look on 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 Will's part. It wasn't because your wife had your cashews and she juggled them and said, "You better do something about it." Okay, and you did. So, is Will a hurting man? Probably, but some of this hurt is self-imposed. Some of this hurt is self-induced. And we don't, we don't, we don't want to talk about this stuff. I, I see, I see disrespect on both sides. I, dis, I see disrespect from 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 Jada and her lack of respect toward toward Will. But I mean, but look, they got an open relationship. <laughs> so it's like you. Neither one is respecting each other. So so how did Chris Rock? How did Chris Rock disrespect Jada? And I'm just saying from from a, just from a standpoint of him being a comedian. That man was disrespected. That man was disrespected. What would I have done? First of all, we all said we would have done this and that until we're in that situation. But I say this. Um, yeah, I will protect. I will protect my wife. I will. I will do what's necessary to to make sure that she's protected and guarded. Um, you're not putting your hands on her. That's that's where that's where you know I draw the line. Uh, jokes, things like that, especially in that setting. I mean, come on. And if anything, if I were offended, I would take my wife by her hand, and I would just would have walked out. That would have spoke volumes, I believe, more than you walking up to another man assaulting another man in front of everyone but then we want to talk about black unity we want to talk about black this black that come on man and here and I'm, I'm gonna go here with this what if this what if the situations were reversed what if will smith was white and he did that to chris rock all hades would have broke loose y'all listen it would have been it would have been Armageddon, and you know it would have been. If the situations were reversed, and Will Smith were white, and, and, and he had hauled off and smacked Chris Rock, would have cried racism, this and that. Oh, this, see, we know. But it's wrong. And, and, and in the words of Whoopi Goldberg, nobody should be hitting anybody. And she said that in the context, which caught her some flack, when uh, uh, what was the woman that that got that got knocked out for hitting uh, hitting that man in the in the in the in the uh, in the elevator? And she said she said she's not condoning any any either of them, but she said to women, if you don't want to get hit back, don't hit anybody. Well, the same is true for us as men. We have to be able as men to be to to contain our emotions. Now, I understand ego, pride, all it. Thank you, thank you, Harrison Ray Rice. Ego, pride, all of that gets in the way. But look what the message. Look at look, look what message that sent to to the world. To the world. Now, some of y'all say that's what Chris Rock gets. Why? Why? Will Smith was just laughing a few seconds ago. He thought he, he didn't think nothing about it until until Jada thought in the Bible. But Jada, you were laughing about your own stuff. 
in your own video. Now, whether that was coping or whatever the case might be, we don't, we don't know. I'm not, I'm not looking at motives. I'm just looking at actions. Because that's all we can judge, our actions, right? That's all we can judge. So if all we can judge are actions, how is it, how is it that Chris Rock is the one that's wrong? And Will is the one who's right. And I wonder if Will Smith would have done that to Eddie Murphy. I asked that to my bro. I asked that question on my on my boy Eric Murdrow's uh, page. Go subscribe to his channel too, by the way. Cold Red Conversations. Um, I said, what if? I said, what if? What if Chris Rock were Eddie Murphy, or Dave Chappelle, or Earthquake, or Guy Tory, or Joe Tory? What if? What if? What if? What if Chris Rock was one of those presenters? Would he would he had would he had done that to to them? I'm just I'm just putting it out there. I'm just asking, just just asking, just asking. I, I don't think so. That's just me. Now, <laughs> jokingly, you know, he may not have hit. You know, uh, he may not have smacked. You know, Kevin Hart, he probably would have been brought up on, you know, child, you know, assault charges. But that's a joke. But anyway, I think for me, I just see, I, I saw, I saw a moment of hypocrisy. So, so if, if I'm going to smack somebody, just, just, if, if I was in my flesh, if, if yours truly was in his flesh, if I would have smacked somebody, it would have been August and Jada. You know, like the scene on uh, on uh, Poetic Justice, when 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 Joe Torrey and Regina King was out, you know, uh, uh, out on the road, on the side of the road, and she up there, and she just straight up disrespected, you know, Joe Torrey, and they weren't even married; it was just going together. And she said, and that's why, you know, I'm I'm blanking, I'm effing, you know, somebody else. And Joe Torrey just stood there. And he was brushing his head, put his brush in his back pocket, walked up to Regina King, who played Aisha, I believe, at the time, stepped up to her, hauled off, and smacked her. Now, I'm not for violence. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is he was disrespected. If if anybody should have gotten it, if I were in my flesh, and that's and I'm, I'm using the, the qualifier, if I were in my flesh, if I were if I were unredeemed, and my wife slept with another dude, and then you got me sitting at a table talking about it, there would have had to been a reach around. Would have had to go to commercial indefinitely, because ain't nobody coming back after that. Mm -mm. Ain't nobody coming back after that. If I was in my flesh, August should have got those hands, not Chris. Just that. This is just my opinion. This is just mine. You don't have to let it be yours. This is just my opinion. But I, I really don't believe if. If there was another comedian up there doing that, that Will would have pulled up on a, on a brother like that. That's just just these are just my thoughts. I remember a time where no one was safe when a comedian was on the stage. Could you imagine him doing that to 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 Bernie Mac? Could you imagine him doing that to Robin Harris? Could you imagine that? Could you imagine him doing that to Ricky? Ricky Harris, ta dow. Could you could you imagine him doing that to to them? Just that, just, I'm, I'm just putting this out there. So, um, but 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 Will Smith had been. Yeah, I, I I know, I know, bro. I I know, AD. It is what it is. I I can't win. You already know. I'm in, I'm in a losing I'm in a losing situation with anything that I say. 
<laughs> these days, but it's all good. But, uh, yeah, um, Will has been disrespected by this woman for a minute publicly, publicly. So their whole, their whole marriage is a hypocrisy, to be honest with you. Their whole marriage is a joke. I mean, really, and, and, I mean, it, it is it is really a laughing stock. But see, unbelievers do this. So what so what do you expect from people who do not know the Lord? What do you expect from people who do not know Christ? What do you what do you expect from people who do not have the Holy Spirit residing in them? This is what you expect. The world is going to do what the world does. Sinners are going to sin. Unbelievers are going to be unbelievers. That, that's that's what they do. So you're not, you, I don't, I don't expect, I, I don't expect the world to act like those of us who are called out of the world. So I don't condone violence of any, of any kind of, but if anything, if anything, uh, Chris Rock would not have been wrong for defending himself. He would not have been. He would not have been because you walked up to another man and you straight up disrespected and violated another man. You, 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 your wife, your wife was not disrespected. How do we know this? Just, just based on observation, because you laughed. Will, you laughed, bro. You laughed until you glanced and looked. And then now you saw her doing this to your cashews. And you saw her starting to close them up. And you had to respond. But you thought it was funny. Will, Will, Will you thought it was funny. Yeah, he didn't even block it there. He, because he, yeah, I agree. I, personally, I do not believe this was staged at all. But also, let me let me show you another let me show you another uh, uh, element that I observe. For those of you who want to talk about, you know, uh, black people as us not having any rights and us not, not you know, we we're we're underprivileged. No, no, we're not underprivileged. Uh, you saw two rich black people <laughs> who got more money than most of us on this live probably do in in in, a, in the course of a of a month. They make <laughs> in a couple of days. Two black people, one was assaulted by another rich black person. Ain't nobody going to jail. Ain't nobody going to jail. But let that been Pookie and Tyrone. First of all, where was where, where was the security at? My security. Somebody somebody should be fired. But you know what's going to probably happen next next year? They will probably have some plexiglass uh, on stage and have security detail. Ain't no, ain't no telling. Ain't no telling. But. I'm just saying this. This is what privilege does for you, because ain't nobody going to jail. And, and from what the news report said, uh, Chris, he, he's not pressing any charges. Now, whether the state would, I doubt it, because this is what privileged people, privileged people are protected. But us average folk like you, see, if I were to walk up and, and haul off and, and smack one of you, first of all, I already know it's gonna be a fight. I already knew that. But secondly, that's assault. That's aggravated assault. I'm going to jail. Or I'm going to have charges pressed against me. But isn't it interesting what privilege does? Like Juicy Smouye or Jesse Smollett. Money, as, as, as Ecclesiastes says, money answereth all things in this life per se, right? You can buy a good defense attorney with money. You can buy a good PR person with money. You, you can buy the best money can buy with money. So I'm, I'm just I'm just noting, noticing a lot of discrepancies and a lot of uh, disparity and disproportionate, you know, observations, if you will, in this situation. That's just me. So those are my thoughts on, on that. But I was talking about, for those of you who are just joining in, you know, I wasn't watching the uh, the Oscars or the or the the awards last night. 
my wife and I were watching Hillsong. We're watching the Hillsong documentary called Hillsong Exposed on Discovery Plus. I would encourage every one of you to watch it. Why? Well, this is what some of y'all gonna tune out. Y'all, y'all can probably just go ahead and just leave. So I, I, I'm gonna give y'all, I'm gonna give y'all 30 seconds to go ahead and leave on what I'm about to say right now. It's it's 9:01. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you 30 seconds. If you need a minute, just just tell me you need to give me a minute as you you know get about your seat and and uh, excuse yourself out the room. Because um, what I'm about to say right now, some of y'all are, are gonna probably get mad and, and and tune yourself out anyway. So I'm just gonna give you a moment to get yourself, you know, to exit, you know, out of the room. And, and and let us mature, balanced, objective Christians talk about what I'm about to say right now, okay? 30 seconds up, five more seconds. Three, two, one. All right, so my wife and I were watching the, uh, the Hillsong uh, Exposed documentary. And you can watch it on Discovery Plus. You gotta, you gotta subscribe to the, to the, uh, to the channel. As a matter of fact, it's a seven day subscription. You can seven day free subscription. You can you can uh you can watch it there. I'm gonna probably cancel mine after after this week. But anyway, um don't tell Discovery though. But anyway, so that's what we watch it. And 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 what what prompted me to watch that um uh, had a few people hitting me up uh, about that. Uh shout out to my brother Richard. He 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 had hollered at me. Now not Richard Merrick with another another uh Richard. Uh, I'm forgetting his name right now, but forgive me. He knows what I'm talking about. But shout out to you, bro. Appreciate the uh, to look the lookout. But him and a few other people was, were asking me, "Hey, man, did you have you watched? Have you seen the the Hillsong uh, documentary?" And I said, uh, "No, no." And and I really didn't have any interest in watching it. And and people kept asking, "Hey, man, you need to you need to watch this. You 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 need to you need to watch this." It said, especially especially. Doing and dealing with what you've been dealing with for the past couple of weeks with this whole Julie Roy's and 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 Grace and John McArthur stuff, they said you need to watch this, and I'm like, really? I said, okay. I mean, I'll I'll, I'll check it out, and you can ask my wife. And so, <laughs> my wife's like, what you ready to do? I said, um, I don't know. I'm about to watch this Hillsong thing, and uh, and uh, she's like, really? She's like, why? And so I told her, why. I said, well, apparently it's something I need to watch, and uh, people tell me I need to check it out, and so she said, all right. And so we always try to, you know, documentaries. I love documentaries. I, I mean, if it's a good documentary, I, I, I will, I will watch the entire thing. And so this is a three-part documentary. Again, you can go to Discovery Plus, uh, get the app. Yeah, it's not, it's not free. It's only free for that for the trial. Okay, it's a, I think a seven-day free trial. You can, you can know, uh, watch, uh, watch this documentary. After that, you got to pay like think five ninety-nine or six ninety-nine, depending on the package. But anyway, so I ended up watching it. And um, I'll say this. Yeah, I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did. This documentary, whoever did it, number one, it was well, it was well sourced. Um, it was well documented. It was it was well put together. I mean, it, it was. So whoever did it, you know, props to them on, on this. But I can tell that this took time. And also, why did I bring up Grace Community Church? Why am I bringing up John MacArthur? Why am I bringing up uh, Julie Roy's? And, and why am I bringing up you know individuals like Eileen Gray and, and, and David Gray and, 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 and so forth? Because I see some similarities in this thing. As a matter of fact, I see similarities in this the same way I see similarities when I was dealing with G. Craig Lewis in, at ABC. When you have, when you have churches, quote unquote, churches that operate like corporations, you're gonna find corruption there, and I'm not making this up. And if you get mad about it, then log off. I do not give a carapa at all. I don't. Here's the reason why: because I strive to be objective. I strive to be balanced. And when I see it, I call it for what it is. I call balls balls and strike strikes. When I saw that documentary, and then I'm looking at what I'm dealing with with Grace Community Church and John MacArthur and and Eileen Gray and how they dealt with this woman and and how people. You know that I've spoken to that that have uh, been at Grace Community Church or have been students of the Master's University or the Master's Seminary. When I've seen this, when I've talked to these people, and when I said, "Hey, 
would you be willing to come forward and give a statement? And when I found as much that the similarities were fear, fear of retaliation, fear of reprisal, fear of being character shame, fear of, of having their whole livelihood destroyed for coming forward. That's the same stuff that's going on at Hillsong or that went on at Hillsong. Same stuff. So, so it ain't just a charismatic issue. It's, it, this is a church issue. Oh, yeah, it is. This, this is a church issue. Um, part three. Yeah. Uh, around the 34 mark and the 44 mark, I believe it was two of the po two of the most poignant statements that this man made. And I'm going to paraphrase one of them. He said, every time uh, we try to reach out and to contact people and say, would you be willing, this is, this is in, in Hillsong documentary, would you be willing to give a statement? They said very few, if any, would. And they said the reasons why they were fearful of doing it is because they said they know that once they come out and come forward and to share their story, their lives would never be the same. They said, because these, they said, you're not just dealing with some small church. You're dealing with an, an organization. You're, you're dealing with uh, an institution, an industrial complex whose goal is to protect the figure of that, of that church or of that ministry. In this situation, it was Brian Houston. In this situation, it was Carl Lentz, who, by the way, I had conversations with this dude and tried to warn him. You can ask my wife years ago and tried to warn Carl Lentz and to no avail. Still, still have his number. I don't know if his number may have changed. You probably have by now, but I've, I've tried to because I saw it. I saw it. So, so when I when I when I talk about this situation with with Grace, um, and with MacArthur and how this 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 thing has the earmarks, and I know I know most of you haven't done your research, haven't done your homework. I know you haven't. You know how I know I know you know I know you haven't for most of you. Or what did they expose, bro? They listen. They expose a lot. Craig, you got to watch it, bro. I, I, I listen. To, to try to tell you this now here in this live won't do you any justice. It, it won't. I would I encourage you to watch it. Then, then come back and holler at me, Craig, in the in, in my inbox. And then to just tell me what you thought about it. But those of us who know, know what's going on. Those of us who know and those of us who have information and intel, I'm telling you. Why would I? Listen, I'm in Texas. I ain't in California. Why would I need to lie? Some of this stuff I've been new. But I wouldn't need to put the pieces together because I didn't have all of the pieces to the puzzle. But now some of this stuff is starting to piece itself together. I've talked to faculty members and, and staff and students at the Masters and at Grace. I've talked to these people. More so privately. And all of them, with the exception of one so far, who's willing to come forward, hopefully Lord willing this week. And, and, and matter of fact, Dennis Swanson is his name. The reason why I mention his name publicly now because he already spoken with Julie Royce. And I know most of you haven't even listened to his story on the Julie Royce podcast because she's already been typecast as being evil, as being uh, 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 divisive. That's a lie. This woman is an investigative journalist. It's, she's an investigative reporter. She investigates and then she reports it. So I know most of you haven't even listened to or watched his interview. A man with almost a quarter of a century experience in ministry who was faculty and who was, who was staff at John MacArthur's church who wrote and was and is a commentator and commentator, excuse me, in one of his books, particularly the biblical counseling book, whose name was a sponge and who Phil Johnson prided himself in saying, yeah, we're glad that his name was taken out. I know you haven't done your work. I know you haven't done your research. I know you haven't. I know you haven't. But it's all documented. And when I reached out to Brother uh, 
to Dennis Swanson. He actually, Dr. Dennis Swanson, when I reached out to this to this brother and, and I asked him, this was this is this is what, March now of 2022? Last year. Last year. Because I was put on to him from another brother who was a, who was a seminary student that I've been knowing since 2014. 2015, give or take. Some of the stuff that I'm I'm hearing about, Ben knew about it, but couldn't speak to it because I didn't have I didn't have the the the, the tangible facts. But now this stuff is starting to come full circle. And I'm telling you, these people are not lying. Eileen Gray is not the only individual who has been abused at that place. She's just the one, she's just one of, 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 of many who has decided to come forward. The others have not yet, or one of a few, or one of several, however you want to term it. But she's the first one that have, have come forward after 20 years of silence. When you watch this documentary on, on uh, this Discovery Plus for Hillsong, you had a man that was sexually assaulted by Brian Houston, the father of, of no, not Brian Houston, uh, Frank Houston, I think Frank Houston, the father of Brian Houston, who was sexually assaulted, who was raped, and he kept silent for 40 years, 40, not, not 14, 40, F-O, oh, F-O, <laughs> 4 -O, 40 years. This man kept silent for four decades. And yet, and then he finally comes forward. So, and oh, and that was another thing that the, that, that the, uh, that the, uh, that one of the interviewers in the documentary said. They said, one of the tactics, I'm trying to tell y'all, I'm trying to tell y'all, look at the pieces, look at the pieces. They said, one of the tactics that abusers of organizations use or people who are PR advocates for their clients use to try to discredit those who uh, who step out and try to come forward to share their story. One of the tactics they, they say that they use is this. They use the issue of how long it has been since this alleged incident occurred. No, I'm not saying that, Amy. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that John McGarth sexually assaulted anybody. No, 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 please. Don't get that out there. I never said that. Let me be clear. I am not saying, have never said that John MacArthur sexually assaulted anybody. I said that in the documentary that Frank Houston, I believe that's the father of Brian Houston, the father who founded Hillsong was the one who sexually assaulted and raped a little boy. And the, and, the, and the boy who became a man waited 40 years before coming forward to share his story. And the reason why the man said he came forward, because he said, these people must be stopped. He said at first he wasn't going to say anything. He was going to keep it to himself and just deal with the trauma. And it, it, just, but just listen, just watch, just watch the documentary. That, that's all I can tell y'all. You, you need to watch it. You need to watch it. And stop. And stop pissing and crapping on folks' testimony who are coming forward and telling the truth. And another thing they said, another thing they said in this documentary, they said that that you wonder why people don't come forward. It's because how they have been treated. And here's what he said. Oh, God, help me. How they've been treated by the church, they said. They said it's one thing when the world does it. They, 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 said, they said, listen, the world going to do that. They said, but what happens and what causes more trauma this, in, the, in the documentary, in the documentary, they said what causes more trauma to the victim is, is not what the what the what the assailant has done. It's more so how the church and people that they have trusted, how they respond when those who have been victimized come forward and share their story. I said, good Lord, are you kidding me? They said the pain of it is more severe when they are not believed by those that they have expected to believe them or expected for them to be supported by. They said it is harder for them to cope. I'm telling you, I'm trying to, I'm trying to help y'all understand and see something here. Yes, we're supposed to examine everything. Yes, we are. 
but we are not to turn a blind eye and ear when we have cases or situations that come before us. We're to examine it all. Yeah, it makes you look like you're the crazy one, Natasha. I'm telling y'all, you need to watch, you need to watch that documentary. You need to watch it. You need to watch the documentary. Even if you watch it during that seven day free trial, you need to watch it. Because me trying to give you the cliff notes to it and try to give you the, the, the highlights is not doing you any service. Then you come back to me. Listen, come back to me. Email me, SecoWoods at Yahoo.com. Email me. Or well, some of y'all may have my number. You can call me. And then you tell me. You tell me if I'm making this stuff up. You tell me. Oh, Seiko just was talking here. Just trying to get clickbait. You tell me. Tell me if I'm just talking out the side of my neck in other anatomical areas. Those of us who know see the similarities. And it is eerily, it is eerily similar with me because I know I know too much. And I know enough to know that this right here looks just like this over here. What's going on in Australia and New York, Hillsong, Australia, Hillsong, New York is happening and is similarly, similarly uh, or eerily similar to what's going on in California. Some of y'all don't even know uh, about uh, Karen Caldwell, Karen Caldwell. Look her up. Look up the master's reject. Read her story. Read her testimony. She was raped. And what did the school do? When she reported her rape. What did the master seminary do to her? How did they how did they protect her allegedly? Just saying. So when I tell you um, we have a problem Church of God We have a problem we, we, have a, we have a huge problem And so instead of getting mad at me uh, Why don't you get curious Don't listen Don't get mad Get curious Don't be mad Be a Berean Examine it Check it out for yourself and for those of you who are who are acting as though i'm attacking MacArthur, i'm, I'm not attack listen miss me with that that's that listen that that is so played that is that is kwame polka dot played at this point with me it's played give me something else give me something else because I, I i'm i'm you can't, that, that's not working anymore i i don't have i don't have to attack him As your brother in Christ, examine what I say. Do your homework. Do your research. I close with this. Let's talk about repentance real quick. I got about five more minutes. Let's talk about repentance real quick. Repentance is supposed to be a change, not just of mind, but of manner of life. It's supposed to be. So when I when I did that live uh this past Saturday, and I responded to John Harris's uh, reaction to uh, the Grace statement, which is not really a statement. Grace Community has not given a statement, which shows you right, right there. But he read it, and he made his analysis. He, he made his analysis or gave his analysis of it. Um, I'm not going to say it was completely objective. I had my concerns with it, but you, I, you can watch it if you want. Conversations that matter, you can watch it. I took issue with some of the things that he said. Um, one of the issues I took with, with John, and I made it clear, he came on my live, on the chat rather, was that he assigned ill motives to Julie Royce, even though he didn't mention the name. 
he mentioned the original article. Everybody named Mama know what the original article was. It's Julie Royce. He assigned ill motive, saying that you know she it, it was it's an, it's an attack, and she did it during the time, or, or this piece came out during the time, you know, of the Shepherd's Conference and all this other kind of stuff. Just just watch it. The Bible tells us we're not to we not to play Holy Spirit Junior. Um, but repentance, repentance, repentance. If repentance is supposed to be a change of mind and a change of manner of life, and based on the report, Eileen Gray was was put out excommunicated because she refused to take her husband back, who was repentant. Okay. Well, if that's the case, and you can read, you can read Eileen Gray's responsive declaration to Carrie Hardy is on the first report that Julie Royce had uh, presented. All those links and attachments are there. So when I hear people say, well, she didn't mention this in her report, you a lie. It's in the attachments. Stop being lazy and have everybody do your work for you. Do your own. My goodness, the woman already put it out there. She did the work. She just gave you the attachments. Just click it. But in the report, in, in Eileen Gray's responsive declaration to Carrie Hardy, when they told her that she needs to take her husband back because he's repentant, oh, she, when I say she gave them an ether comment, like Nas ether, she says in her declaration, this is all sworn testimony, sworn statement. Mr. Hardy claims, this is on page eight for those who need to know, on her on her response to declaration page eight point number 15 mr hardy falsely claims that i never wanted to reconcile with respondent that is false mr hardy told me that i should recon reconcile with my husband upon his own command and that the of the leaders of the church of his church i have desired to reconcile our marriage and that is why i entered counseling with him and have repeatedly requested that respondent and i obtain professional marriage counseling since he repeatedly refused professional counseling for us and for himself we remain separated. Respondent refused stating, quote, it would violate my conscience to do it. I cannot do it. My res my reply was, quote, it did not violate your conscience to kick blank and abuse the kids blank, but it would violate you or it would violate your conscience to seek help for your marriage. End quote. You see it. You see the irony that she's mentioning. She says, based upon that and the fact that, re that respondent has continually threatened me, lied, stalked, falsely accused me, and has demonstrated emotional instability. I have chosen to remain separated and to protect myself and the children from this abusive man. On two occasions, Mr. Hardy, this is point number 16 on the page eight. On, the, uh, on two occasions, Mr. Hardy said to me, quote, you are irrational. The first time was September 7, 2001. Mr. Hardy was telling me to reconcile what responded against my will. I said to him, quote, here, here's the bomb. Here, here's what she just, she just murked him and bodied him with this. She said, I said to him, quote, I would like you and the elders to prove to me that you trust David with your own children and the children of the people in this church by hiring him back because they said they were not going to uh, re renew his contract because of these quote unquote allegations, right? But he's repentant. He's repentant. She says. I also said, when you restore his job, then I will know it's time to consider his return home. End quote. Mr. Hardy became noticeably, noticeably upset and said, quote, you can't expect us to do that. You are irrational. You are making irrational decisions. The second occasion that Mr. Hardy called me irrational was on November 6, 2001. In this recorded session, we discussed respondents' immoral behaviors with our two daughters, his delusions and his chronic lying. We discussed the fact that respondent did not think that his immoral behaviors were wrong. His conscience was not working properly. Toward the end of his session, Mr. Hardy said, quote, it doesn't matter if he's not entirely repentant. Apparently it mattered to Grace, it mattered to Kerry Hardy that it he, that his repentance wasn't entirely repentant because they didn't they didn't bring him back. They didn't, re, they, didn't re, they didn't reinstate his contract. But you want an abused victim to subject herself to an abuser and let them come back home, but you won't let him come back to work. I I I'll shut up. Let me let me stop here. Uh like I said, I gotta go to work. 
uh, what y'all can do is go to the Discovery Plus, download the app, watch Hillsong Exposed, get back with your boy, and let's have a conversation, okay? You guys have a great day. I love y'all. Y'all know the drill. Whatever you do, do all to the glory and honor of God. God bless.